fight. Heading over now. Boop boom. Let's Greetings, go. everyone. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at the second member of the Husbando Bandits, the guy your girlfriend told you not to worry about, Jackal Anubis. Anubis is a shadow DPS unit. He belongs to the Nile faction of characters and uses rage as the resource to execute his skills. He relies heavily on the Doggo, so at the start of your battle summoning him should be your first priority. His basic attack has five sequences and will generate rage on hit. Casting a basic attack after a successful dodge will grant 20 rage and fire back at the target with his range pistol. This will divert Apu's attention to the target and trigger a coordinated attack. Skill 1 Jackal Charge fires multiple range shots from his pistol. Hitting an enemy with this move will increase his crit rate by 15% for 4 seconds. While UPU is on the field, Jackal Charge will deal more damage, and successful hits on an enemy will change skill 3 into Jackal's Gaze. Skill 2 Jackal's Whirl turns his pistol into a blade to execute multiple slashes on the enemies. Successful hits with Jackal Whirl increases his shadow damage by 20% for 4 seconds. If UPU is on the field, Jackal Whirl will deal more damage, and successful hits on an enemy will change skill 3 into Jackal's Wild Slash. Skill 3 Spirit Guide summons Upo to the field to attack enemies, independent of Anubis. Upu will remain on the field for 30 seconds, or until he defeats his target. While Upu is on the field, Spirit Guide will be changed into Jackal Gaze or Jackal Wild Slash, depending on Anubis's action. Casting the skill allows him and Anubis to perform a coordinated attack. Jackal Gaze and Jackal Wild Slashes can be cast once every 8 seconds each. Furthermore, when Spirit Guide is cast, the Doggo will inherit any buffs Anubis currently has on himself. His ultimate can only be cast while Upu is on the field. Anubis will fuse with Upu, deal shadow damage to the surrounding area, and gain the following effects. On hit, all party members' attack is increased by 35%. Any skill Anubis had that were on cooldown will have their cooldowns reset. Skill 3 is now fixed to Jackal Wild Slash. When basic attacks or skills are used, additional attacks will also be dealt to the target. These attacks will be considered as ultimate damage. When skill 1 or skill 2 deals additional damage, their respective cooldowns will be reduced by 5 seconds. The fuse state will last for 10 seconds. If everyone's favourite little action figure Sobek is on the team, the chain link has the following effects. Increases the party's attack by 45%. Outgoing melee damage is increased by 30%. Ultimate charge region rate is increased by 60%. Anubis will fuse with Upu on cast and reset the cooldown of all his skills. These effects will remain active for a sexy 15 seconds. And lastly, when teammates or Upu defeats a target, Anubis will gain a set amount of ultimate charge. As you guys can probably tell, Anubis is actually pretty easy to play. The game plan is as follows. Use skill 1 to get your 15% crit rate buff followed by skill 3's jackal gaze, then use skill 2 to get your 20% shadow damage buff followed by skill 3's jackal's wild slashes. Use basic attacks while skill 1 and skill 2 are on cooldown, and avoid using skill 1 or skill 2 while skill 3's jackal gaze or jackal wild slash is currently active. The reason for this is because they will not stack, and you'll just end up losing out on the damage from whichever one was active first. And lastly, burn all of your active skills before triggering his ultimate. Since all skills are resetted once the ultimate is cast, not casting them beforehand is a DPS loss for sure. Rinse and repeat. When it comes to functors, the free-to-play Pharaoh Ukakaf is a fantastic choice. It will passively increase your skill as you expend Rage, up to 32% at Transcendent 1. If you're new to the game and lacks the currency to purchase Ukakaf from the DV shop, Pharaoh Akhenaten is a pretty great alternative. 
Remember while fused with Upu, Anubis's attacks are considered as ultimate damage, so a 32% increase in ultimate damage is huge for him. At tier 5 you're looking at a 48% increase to ultimate skill damage. His signature functor Hekanemai is his best in slot, but it does have a flaw. When Upu attacks there's a 50% chance to deal extra damage and inflict a 4 second stun on the enemy. Additional AOE damage will be triggered when using skill 1 and skill 2. The damage of these attacks are increased depending on Upu's distance from the enemy and these attacks are considered as skill damage. And here comes the butt. The functor only works while Upu is on the field and Anubis is using basic attacks or skills. While in his ultimate, they fuse and Upu is removed from the field, meaning the functor effectively becomes a stat stick. So if you're going to run his signature functor, avoid using his ultimate for the best damage output. This also mean you can drop Sobek from his team since you won't really need the chain link. Speaking of Sobek, I know most of you don't have many good things to say about poor Sobi, but can we all agree the value he brings to the team is worth at least three-piece Nibelungen lead? Throw them bad boys on slots four, five and six. Max out his ultimate skill level to 30 if you have the mats and that's it. If you're feeling generous, you can slap three-piece Spartan battle cry on one, two and three and call it a day. He'll just be there to battery Anubis and grant emotional support. For ether codes, three yellow will give him a 25% chance to instantly defeat enemies that are below 25% HP. When he defeats a normal enemy, he'll gain a 4% damage buff against elite enemies. This goes up to 40% and will last until the battle ends. All right, back to Anubis. For sigils, we can go two routes. Route one is three-piece El Judnir for slots one, three, and five, and three-piece Ambush of the Owl for two, four, and six. El Judnir can give you up to 40% more shadow damage at max stacks, and Owl will boost his normal attacks and skill. This setup will work with both the free-to-play functors and his signature, it's generally the build we recommend for him. The next one is only really viable if you're not running his functor and goes all in on ultimate damage. For this build, we want Scale of Mart for slots 1, 2 and 3 and Nibelungenleid for 4, 5 and 6. Scale of Mart will increase ultimate damage by 30% and further increase our total damage. Nibelungenleid will increase our ultimate damage by 30% and increase the charge speed of our ultimate by 30%. Needless to say, you'll need Sobek on this team to further battery him. This will not work if you're running his signature functor due to reasons we've already discussed. For enchantments, attack, skill damage, bonus shadow damage, crit rate and crit damage are all fair game. Warps really allow you to personalize characters in a way that best fits your playstyle as such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, here they are. For slots 1 and 2, we want two power-up melee mods and two executioner mods. Usually I would say one judge and one executioner, but the judge is only active for the first 15% of the enemy's HP. So two executioners, it is because we get 40% to work with. For slots 3 and 4, add two telepathize force field 1s and two EM flux if your HP usually stay above 70% during battles. If you're usually at death's door, use two Savage instead. Savage have the best damage bonus, but the farm up state isn't necessarily where I want to spend my Sundays. For slots five and six, we want two kinetic mods and two evolution particles. For ether codes, three red is recommended for general DPS Anubis. This will allow Upu to attack with Jackal's Gaze after every full rotation of your basic attacks. Inflict a penalty on the enemy hit by skill 1. The enemy under the effect of penalty will take AOE damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Damage to the panelized enemy by Anubis or Upu will generate an explosion once every second. If you are running the signature functor 3 blue is recommended. Your basic attack skill 1 and skill 2 will all generate 5 rage. After an enemy is defeated, 
Upu will seek out another target instead of disappearing. His field time is increased by 30 seconds. And ultimate charge rate is decreased by 50%. But coordinated attack damage from Upu is increased by 35%, which is very fitting for his functor. For teammates, Sobek and Hera will make for good company. And again guys, I know Buckethead is not the best of characters, but trust me, he definitely brings a lot of value to the team. And by that, I mean faster ultimates. You'll also get the added benefit of a 30% crit rate buff, while in modifier mode for running two Nile units. If you don't have Hera, just replace her with Bastet on blue code for some shadow resistance shred. You'll also get an extra 15% crit damage for running three Nile units. Pair this setup with the mightier kitty, and you'll really be cooking. If you're one of those men of culture I've heard so much about, you can replace Sobek with Jin A on Blue Code. She will provide the entire team with armor break, and her chain link with Bastet will further shred shadow damage resistance by 30%. I strongly recommend this team if you're running Anubis with his signature functor. In the future, you can replace Jin A with Lingguang, making playing him even more brainless because in addition to getting a damage buff, you'll no longer need to dodge. And there you have it. In my opinion, Jackal Anubis is a very underrated character. It almost feels like the poor guy was set up to fail. The first obstacle for him is Sobek, undoubtedly. The second is the nature of his functor, albeit it isn't nearly as bad as others might have, you think. And lastly, the poor bastard is a male character in a gotcha game. Despite those laughable reasons for dismissing him, just know that his strength has never been questioned.